Okay, we're back and uh, you can see where the voltage is now and you can see how this chart's running. And we just calculated this. The cell's at 1.7 volts right now. And uh, it's going to fall down. I would suspect it's going to fall down to 1.2 per cell. And of course, six cells is not enough to give you 12 volts. But the thing is, it has this horsepower right here between this curve and this to start your car and that's probably why it works when you convert the Elm battery so if you calculate that now Chuck 10.10 10 divided by six cells what do you come up with there and we should be well 10.9 now but it's all right Okay, so we're at 1.6 volts per cell right now, which is way below a lead acid battery because there is no lead acid in here. As you can see, there's no floating balls, but you can see the light is still on bright. And uh, this is a 3.3 amp load for this battery, which is about right since they're suggesting 1.8 amps. So we'll see just how far out this goes and we'll be back until it's dead. Okay, I'm back and basically here's your curve. Now this has been running for about 30 minutes here at this load, which is above what the battery load is recommended. And you can see where the light is now. And you can see where this, so it's at 1.4 volts now per cell. So somewhere around here, I'm looking to see, you can see it's pretty flat in here. And then it starts to come down. I would suspect that this would want to run around 1.2 volts. So we shall see and see. It's just starting to flatten off right here a little bit. And we'll see what's going to happen here and we'll be back. Okay, now you can see the chart. We're about at... 35 almost 40 minutes and you can see we're all right here by this number that we're at about 1.3 volts per cell and uh, it's, uh, it's definitely got some current because it's running the uh, the light at 3.3 amps and this is considered a constant current source because it changes with the filament so we're just going to run this battery out and then we're going to recharge it and try this again and we'll be back okay we're back and now you can see that we're at 6.40 and you can see what this curve sort of looks like here and we're at 1.1 volts per cell right now so what we're going to do is just run it out and recharge it with a rejuvenator, rejuvenator and, and do this all over again. So remember, this was formed with, with elm and no sulfuric acid, so the forming process took place with alum. And so you can see here that we're about about uh, 35 40 minutes into this at the load of the light which is between 3.5 and 2.5 amps I think Chuck just measured that and so we're just gonna let it run down here to where a nightcat would be considered dead actually I'm just gonna run it to the bottom and I'll be right back and then we'll watch the charging curve okay so what Chuck's going to do now is he's going to disconnect the light and we're going to see how this recovers because this is pretty much dead. Okay. And so right in here you can see how this is pretty much recovering. And Reddit's going to recover too. And you can see it here on the meter.
And as soon as this is done recovering, I'll come back and then we'll start the charge. So I'll be back. Okay, we're back. And uh, it looks like it wants to settle at 1.34 volts per cell. And so Chuck's going to start is going to clamp up the rejuvenator to it and we're going to watch how it takes the charge you, you just clamp to these just clamp to these because you need the meter right away you can see it shoot up there and you're going to measure the current that it's going to draw which is about 11 amperes I see to 10 and that's to be expected because it's dead and you can see it coming up here and so we'll see how this curve goes it's going up pretty quick it here so that's basically what your curve looks like <coughs> and we'll be back okay we're still under charge here and I don't know if you can see this right here or not I think you can these are the little spikes that are riding on top of the wave of the rejuvenator and so it's, it looks like it's in desulfation mode but we got to watch this because it's at 13 uh, well about 12 sometimes it hits 13 depending on the battery uh, it charges and then falls and then charges and falls and the rejuvenator is just going to correspond with that so we're going to put the charge to it and then run this curve again. You can see now we're down to 5 amps, so it's starting to taper. Because it doesn't want to overcharge this battery. It knows that the battery uh, can't take that. And it's a smaller battery. So it's going to regulate itself to charge it on the correct curve. And so we'll be back. Okay, I'm back, and as you can see, this is the charge curve, and it's desulfating all the way up because these batteries have been sitting on the shelf forever, and of course, sulfation builds up on lead as the air around the plates oxidize, so you can see that this green spiking all the way up here is desulfating these plates, and you can see the chemical breaking up in the battery. If I see this one's white and this one's clear and if we go around to the other side you can see that it's white here which means it's breaking the chemical off the plates and then it's a little clearer here and then white again. So here's what the rejuvenator is doing and you can see it by this green light it's still taking the charge and this flashing means that it's regulating and pulsing now the battery on the top of the charge. So it's letting the battery fall down and then it pulses it up. And so this is the rejuvenator now is it's gone from the spike mode to the pulse mode and it's going to continue to do that so it's pretty much done because the chemical is boiling now and we don't want to boil this too much because it's a small battery but uh, we'll let it do this for a little bit and then we'll come back and run the uh, the discharge curve again and see if we get any more out of this battery with alum in it and I'll be back Okay, I'm back. This is uh, 12 hours later. 
and you can see this was our first discharge rate and then we charge the battery back up and this now is the next day and so what I'm going to do is recharge it with a rejuvenator and then we're going to pull the same low test but I want to make something perfectly clear here that if the lead acid battery in other words if this battery is formed with lead acid and then the lead acid is dumped out you're going to have much better results as you will see here in a minute as I show you something so the plates must be differentiated uh, in the battery before you add the elm and th then it's possible to convert the battery but then again since it's not sulfuric acid you're going to be at a different charge rate and a different load rate so as you can see the rejuvenator is charging this uh, these balls are up here at the top but that's it that indicates low cells if the white ball was up and then the green ball was up the green ball was to the top right now then it would be a fully charged lead acid battery so one of the things to suspect in a dry charge battery is the plates are already differentiated and you're going to have much better results but in in this 1951 or 1952 battery nothing was formed that was formed by a generator set that the military had and what they would do is put a whole string of these in line and charge them all at one time and, and that would take the amount of time because the the batteries were all in series so here we can see I'm going to see if I can expand this you can see here the steps all right now you notice that the spikes are really working on the top of this right now and you can see them here and you can see that the battery is at 14 point almost well 15 volts it says so the way to check that is go over and look at the rejuvenator and see what this green light's doing and the green light's just flashing like it was earlier and so let's just find out if we differentiate these plates exactly what's going to happen here so I'll be back okay now that I've differentiated the plates that you can see here you can see here the load box is capable to run and you can see that the voltage is 11 point well 25, 26, 24 and that the load now is acting more like a lead acid battery so I'll let this run until it shuts off and then we'll go ahead and recharge again and see what happens and that's going to happen any minute now any second here uh, actually not because I'm going to go by this meter here which is 1104 so it's going to run quite a while here I'll be back okay it's run about five minutes here and then you can see that it shut off right here and the battery now is into recovery so what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge this up with a rejuvenator and we're going to run this load out and see what happens I'll be back okay I'm back we're up on our curve and I'm going to scale this so you can see it okay so you can see here that it dipped down because of the impedance and then it rose up in its straight line across as the rejuvenator charges it so what we want to now do is stop the rejuvenator right here and watch where the voltage falls and of course we can see that coming up right here 
so we'll auto scale this. And actually, we should use the other scale because it shows a little more detail. Okay, so the battery is falling down, and now what we're going to do is let this settle and notice where it is by causing the plates to differentiate. Now, the secret to this battery when you do this is I would start with forming the plates with lead acid then completely take the lead acid out and add the ohm because you need the differential and plate material to have the battery work correctly so remember everybody this is just an experiment to show you what can happen here so I want to detail this quite explicitly with the way it falls off and the way that it uh... alright I'm back I had to start over uh, because I ran out of memory and so I'm just going to repeat the last part okay so right now we can see that this battery has been charging this whole time and uh, so we have this voltage that we push the battery to which means that the rejuvenator is regulating and you can see it there by the flashing green Maybe a little hard to see it there, but there it is. So we can just turn that off. And we can watch the battery fall down. And uh, so what I've tried to do here is differentiate the plates a little bit and we'll move into another section after this on doing that and uh, as I said one way to do that would be to form this battery right here with sulfuric acid that ball just seems to be stuck because none of the others are floating and that was a problem with these batteries is uh, they would expand and stick in the little tubes here so one way would be to form this battery with sulfuric acid, dump it out, and then fill it with them. And we'll do that. We're going to differentiate it even more so you can see what happens. And But anyway, this battery is falling down now. And I'm going to turn the load dyno on. And of course the fan's going to draw one watt of power. So now we're just going to go on the first load here which would be equivalent to the battery and so we can see what it's going to do here so we're on this first button and we're going to go by this meter because this is the one measuring and you can see that it rested and it's falling down so I'll be back when it's down a little bit more okay as you can see by differentiating the plates this battery's found a plateau. And see here, it's pretty flat in here. Now if it continues this out to the end, then we've got something. And, and it's possible to form the battery and then just fill it with elm. Uh, drain the sulfuric acid and then just fill it with elm. And then you'll have a battery that sustains here. So. By the way, you won't get any indications. This ball is just stuck. So, you can see it going down. You don't, you don't show any hydrometer reading at all because it's elm. So, let's move back to the chart. And you can see we've got a pretty flat line here. So, this actually is very encouraging that you can form the battery with sulfuric acid and then just dump the sulfuric acid and replace it with elm is what it's looking like to me because you've got a really flat curve here so let's see where it goes and i'll be back